Hello, welcome back to our study of Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rebbe Eliezer Malamed Shalita. Hope that everyone had an enjoyable Shabbos and weekend. And here we are back at it again as we continue our study in the laws and customs of Jewish marriage. We left off at the end of last week discussing the requirement of having kosher witnesses at a wedding. Rebbe Malamed continues, L'fichach, when it comes time for the wedding ceremony, you have to pick and choose, designate two kosher witnesses. That they stand under the chuppah and they see the entire process of kedushin. And even though there are a lot of people that are there that will actually see what's happening, nevertheless, you have to designate these two specific kosher witnesses. Why? Because who gets the front row seats at a chuppah? Who's closest to the action, so to speak? Those are the family members. And Halacha teaches us that family members do not qualify as kosher witnesses. And those who are not family members, who are just friends or acquaintances, they can't see everything up close what's happening, and they wouldn't be able to discern uh, the nature of the actions that are taking place under the chuppah. And also we take into account the opinion of many poskim who hold because some hold that if you have a, a mixed group where you have kosher edim, but in that group there are also non-kosher edim, so in this case it would be relatives, then it kind of passels the entire group. It, it invalidates the entire group. Therefore, we designate two witnesses. The officiant would then say to these witnesses, Rakatem Haidim. You are the only witnesses for the purpose of Kedusha. Not that everyone else can't see, but you are designated as the witnesses. Kalomar Al Haidim Kan Im Hakrovim El Rakatem Haidim. As if to say, don't think that you are, are witnessing what's taking place together with all the relatives who are here, but only you are the witnesses. Al Yedekach Hakrovim Lomit Starfim Laidus, Umimela Enim Postlem Osa. This way, the relatives who are all surrounding would not invalidate these two as proper witnesses. And therefore, we have to specifically designate them. And that we want these two witnesses, the two witnesses who will sign the ketubah beforehand, or the two witnesses who will witness under the chuppah, that they will be designated as only the two of them. So when I officiate a wedding, I'll always follow the practice where we tell the bride and the groom to designate the witnesses. We say, atem edai, you are my witnesses, which means to the exclusion of all others. Ha'edem tzrichem lias kesherim. The witnesses have to be what we call kosher witnesses. What does that mean? bogrim. They have to be males of age over bar mitzvah. Shomrei Torah umitzvos. They have to be Torah observant. Follow the mitzvos. Ben shlosh esrei lepachos. At least thirteen years old. Sheinam krovi mishpacha shalachasan ohakala. They cannot be relatives of the bride or the groom. Aval achim dodim bnei dodim saba v'saba raba shalachasan ohakala. Therefore, we see that brothers, uncles, cousins, grandfathers, great-grandfathers of the bride and the groom, they cannot serve as witnesses for a chuppah. He says also, maybe perhaps someone who works for the bride or the groom may also be invalidated to serve as a witness because he relies on them for his livelihood. An interesting shita. Aval chaverim tovim, but good friends. She'ein b'neim l'bein echad m'bnei hazuk kirva mishpachtit o talos kaspit yichalim l'shamesh keidim. But good friends, good acquaintances who do not have any specific relation to the bride or the groom, familiar relation, or they have no monetary dependence upon either of them, they can serve as witness. 
אדם שאינו מזדהה עם ערכי התורה והמצוות שעליהם מבוססים הקדושים, אינו יכול להיות עד בחסנו. A person who is not careful in Torah and mitzvot, and he is not scrupulous in his performance, cannot serve as a witness at a wedding. ולכן, אדם שחוטא בגילוי הרעיוס, פוסל עדוס, someone who is unscrupulous with his personal relationships, he cannot serve as a witness, meaning that he has extramarital affairs, something like that. וכן גנב, פוסל מליוס עד, someone who is known to be a thief, cannot be a witness. ואין הבדל בין אדם שמספרץ לבייס חברו בלילה וגונב לבין מי שמוכר בחנות ומשענס המשקל אותו ועשו. Interesting, he says that there's no difference with someone who sneaks into someone's house to steal something in the cover of night or someone who has a store and he has dishonest weights and measures. Or someone who steals or embezzles from a company. These are all considered ganavim, they're all thieves and cannot serve as a witness. The general standard that we have here in the diaspora, we ask, is somebody a Shomer Shabbos male, not related to bride or groom, that a person has to be Sabbath observant. If he's not, then he cannot serve as an aid Kedushin. He says, so therefore we want to be very careful when we pick our witnesses that they are indeed people who are Torah observant, people who are God-fearing, Yirei Shemayim, and also we try to find people who are Talmidi Chachamim. Um, there's a lot that's riding on this. If you think about it, if you serve as the Eid Kedushin, then the whole veracity of this process and the affecting of These two individuals becoming single people, now a married couple, is really on your hands, on your head, and therefore we rely on a person. Now, I've often found that this is one of the more challenging aspects in certain, depending on what the family situations are and the weddings that we perform, but sometimes it's not so easy as one would think to find kosher edim, and we have to try and find out. And, and I often find that people are not always entirely honest either, to be, <laughs> if, if you can imagine that. Nobody wants, because it's hard to say to somebody, you know, are you, are you a thief? Are you honest? Are you Shomer Shabbos? And we have certain standards that we follow, so sometimes we just have to rely on the information that we have. But if we know for a fact that certain things take place, then we try not to ask those individuals to begin with. It's not a discriminatory thing. It's a halachic aspect. We want to make sure that we have weddings that are done halachically proper because we're trying to get these two individuals, the young man and the young woman, married, and in order to affect their new status, we had to affect their condition, we have to have all the right things in place, and a major part of that is, of course, kosher edim. So, we thank you for listening. We will see you here again next time. Hope everyone has a great week ahead, and we'll see you and listen here next time.